a lot of time we are tunnel vision laser focused researcher. If I need to name one most transformative habit I've started in my academic research is to take time for coffee with people who know something that I don't know. And in other words, this is called informational interview. Until we meet the other person who can shade light to the new opportunity, we don't know what we don't know. So today's video, I'm going to share a little bit more about informational interview. And I hope at the end of this video, you get to understand how to prepare for an informational interview, what are the questions to ask, and how to follow up with the person that you recently contacted for informational interview. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I brought a guest, Vicky from Biomed Badass. Hi, I'm Vicky, author of the Biomed Badass blog and host of the YouTube channel where we discuss all things career related for STEM researchers working in academia and beyond. For those who subscribe to my channel, you might be here because you saw my postdoc video that I shared more personally why I decided to move on from academic career to look at other opportunities. But in that video, I haven't quite figured out where I wanted to go. So I do have a news to share. I found a job as a medical writer just before Christmas. That was Christmas come early to me and I am moving to Paris. By the time you're watching this video, I'm already working as medical writer. Looking back, I think there are a lot of strategy that has worked or hasn't worked during this transitioning state. Vicky has been one of those pivotal people that I have spoken to that gave me great sense of confidence and useful information how to become a medical writer. Without her advice, I wouldn't be so confident when I was interviewing for the job. So I invited her to take a coffee with us today. So welcome. Welcome, Vicky. Thank you, Vera. And, and first of all, congratulations on the new job. That's fantastic. I'm taking a coffee with you. So cheers for that. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. I really appreciate that you taken the time for my informational interview. I have the perspective of somebody who's been an interviewee and also the interviewer on information interview. So I made my transition from academia just over four years ago now. And I was completely lost at the time when I was in academia. We're talking about now five years ago. Um, I started to think that I I wanted to leave um, and I didn't have a clue how to do it and informational interviews and talking to people outside of academia was absolutely pivotal as awkward as it may feel to some people to have to reach out to strangers that you don't know that ability to be able to talk to an interviewer at a job interview and have that knowledge of people working inside the industry with you just takes you up to another level as a credible candidate for that role so it's a really useful thing to do is to go out and talk to people. Um, and as I said, it is very intimidating. It can be hard, especially, you know, if you're reaching out to people and they're not getting back to you and you feel like well, there's no point in this. So I just wanted to talk a little bit today with you and with your audience about, you know, what are the things you can do to try and improve those informational interviews and get the information you need out of them? So if you want to learn more about the exact conversation that Vicky and I has gone through a few months ago, we have recreated it and now the video is available on her channel. So go ahead to the link down below and check it out. And maybe if you want to be a medical writer, that video will inform you what are the more advanced questions to ask when you're reaching out to another medical writer. When I was preparing for different job applications, Vicky has given me valuable advice. If you are interested in learning more about how to break into medical writing as a career, how to perform better in a writing test, Vicky's checklist is very helpful and is going to help everybody who wants to break into medical writing. I'll put the link down below so that you can get access to all the free downloadable PDFs and newsletter that Vicky is creating from her expertise. I personally really have gained so much from her and if you are interested in medical writing, make sure to stay in touch with Vicky. So I have to ask an important question for the general audience who is watching is what is the good practice for informational interview when you're planning one and you reach out to people? Is there something explicitly they need to consider when they ask 
for such an interview? Yeah, I think, well, there's certain things you want to know about um, that are going to help you firstly decide whether that's the right career for you or not. And secondly, gather the information you need uh, to make yourself sound like a credible candidate in applications and interviews. So I would have a list of things that I think you should probably ask or uh, try and learn a little bit about. So I would include in that probably the company culture. So what is the culture like at the company you're going to work for? You can find a little bit of that out by doing a Google search, but really the way you find out about how a culture works and whether it, you know, it's functional or not, as the company would like to say on the website, is to talk to people who are working there. And so I think you know, that, that's really the only way you can find that accurate information about company cultures through talking to people. Um, I think the way to bring this up is to bring up that I saw the company website and usually the person will laugh. It will help people know that you are already already doing your homework but you are asking this question on top of what your homework was and I think that makes you different from other people who just pick up the phone and have a list of questions from Google on what to ask on informational interview yeah 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 absolutely and I think um, that definitely goes for culture and, and company values I mean, company values are something that all companies feel like they should have values written um, and, and they write them out and they sound fantastic but which companies actually live through those values are two different things and that's only something you will never find that out beyond looking at the website right you have to talk to people as to whether that company is actually acting out those values things like investing in people and an employee will tell you straight away whether that company is interested in investing in or not you can learn a lot about competitors as well and challenges within the industry and what the company's facing those sorts of information that you can get about the sector in general I think are quite important um, and you get the insight from somebody working directly in there that's something again that you can't really get off the internet as well as you can from talking to somebody. Also learning about which skills they use on a daily basis. So this is important. I think you mentioned this, you know, matching medical writing to what you enjoy doing and the skills you enjoy using. Understanding a little bit about which skills you like and whether or not you would be using those on a daily basis is quite important. I mean, you can infer from understanding a little bit about the job of what skills you might be needed, but they're going to know exactly what they're using every single day. Again, that's insight that you get from talking to somebody that you don't necessarily get just seeing a list of what duties are on a job advert. And then also not just about the job itself, but if you're interested in, in actually moving into that area, how they made the transition, mm. you know, how did they make that step? Yeah. Um, who were the key players that they were talking to um, and what the recruitment process was that they faced. Understanding a little bit more about that will prepare you for mm -hmm. if you actually make that step. There's an advice is never ask direct advice. People tend to be more open to share about how they get into the field and their own visa problem, their own journey to, with you easily in a 20, 30 minute phone call. Mm -hmm. Versus if you are just telling them the situation and someone will just like, oh, you should go to UK, you should go to Germany. Germany, and maybe those advice are not fitting your situations, then that, that is a wasteful use of 30 to 20 minutes. So I've learned that the hard way because <laughs> there was a phone call that someone tried to give a lot of advice, but she refused to share anything about her work. In the end, time runs out. And then I also had to just quickly cut the meeting short and it was an embarrassing moment. And yeah, it, it, was, it was a strange interview in that sense. But I think I have my part of responsibility of the initiative initiating that interview avoid making requests of like can you give me an advice or just ask mm -hmm. things that are more natural to share and I think that also add to the personal touch that you are curious about other people's life and people tend to connect with you a lot better once you open the conversation in that way yeah yeah well, that gets back to my point about making the interview easy for the interviewee right and then that yeah they're willing to hear about their life story and, and you're absolutely right you can then see how that fits in and relates to what you know the information you need because everybody's situation is unique and, and some parts will be relevant and some parts will be completely irrelevant you know you can tease that out yourself keep the conversation going by making it easy for them and you know asking about them and, and their experience that's all you're doing really is digging into the research about their life and their experience and their transition stories and I think also you can as well if conversation's flowing you know you can ask where they're heading and where the opportunities are in the industry and then learn a little bit more about an insider's perspective on where that industry is heading, what are the trends, 
what are the opportunities going forward for you, potentially, if you were to get into that position by seeing it through the eyes of somebody else and asking them what their aims are, what they're looking for from the industry they're working in. I think that generally is what you can try and get out of an informational interview in very general terms. And also this key I said before about asking whether or not there are other contacts they're willing to forward you on to, that can really help as well to get a warm introduction to the next person to talk to. But I'd also like to add, and I think you mentioned this a second ago, Vera, you know, you will experience times when you have a conversation with someone, it doesn't, it just doesn't work, right? Um, and that's normal. If you're unlucky that it happens to be the first time you talk to somebody, just don't let it put you off the whole process because it's just how life is. Sometimes you just don't gel with people. It just doesn't work. It feels awkward. But the next person you talk to can be feel like a completely natural conversation to have and, and feel fine. And, and, you know, you can go on to develop a relationship going forward with them in your contact directory. So what I'm saying is if it feels awkward and you have an experience like you had, don't let it put you off. We've all been there. We've all had those sorts of conversations where it just doesn't gel and you don't get what you need out of the conversation and they probably don't either. So um, just don't let that put you off the whole thing because, you know, the gains you get out of doing this type of networking far outstrip the potential negatives of not hearing back from people or having the odd difficult conversation. You'll get a lot more out of it if you just, like you said, keep putting yourself out there, keep trying, just keep moving forward and you'll get there. So I have two tips on practical side of doing interview. I found there's a Calendly booking system that you can create your own bookable hour and you can depict it as 24 five minutes or 30 minutes conversation. Mm -hmm. So you can just share that link and the person can choose whatever time that works for them and they can book you for a call and they will create a Google Calendar invite automatically. I think that's a wonderful mm. help. Makes you look more industry ready and very professional instead of having back and forth emails when you don't know that person. And the second point of the technical part is to make sure you keep time. So if you say you want to take a 20 minute call or 30 minute call sometimes people are really friendly and they're open to talk for another hour one thing i always do maybe five minutes before the time that we're supposed to end i will say this vicky i'm sensitive that we try to end this call at the top of the hour and we are five minutes before and then sometimes people would be like oh no problem i can stay and i have time we can finish like 20 minutes later but sometimes people are very appreciative of that and i think that's a gesture of being professional when you're at the phone call and know that you don't have indefinite time from the other person mm. no they're great tips they're great tips absolutely you make yourself look more professional by behaving in that way and also adding a quick follow-up thank you note after the call as well within 24 hours just highlighting what you got out of the conversation and thanking them for their time basically I mean, that's just courteous and a good thing to do. So I think those three things are really helpful. So to sum up this call, I think we have talked a lot about our personal stories and some tips on how to make informational interview more professional and manageable. And the hardest part of this is actually what we have spent the most time talking about is the psychology of it. Just don't give up and keep putting yourself out there and don't take it personal when people don't mm -hmm. respond to you. And, and make it easy for the interviewee. That will improve your success rate, generating the information you need. That's great. Thank you very much, Vicky, for, first of all, being connected with me and helping me out with my career transitioning. And I'm committed to paying this forward to all these people out there who may need the help. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me onto your channel, Vera. It's been thank great. You. Thank you for being here as my guest and thank you everyone for watching and please subscribe if you want to know more about transitioning to industry for Biomed Badass channel and I occasionally have a few videos like this that are more conversational and they are not predictable so please hit that bell notification so you won't miss anything in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.